Hi, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the Sit Down. Lucky Grandma, brand new movie from this one right here. Say, Celie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. I enjoyed your movie a lot. It was fun. It was funny. And also it made me really nostalgic about being in New York City and walking around with people and all that. So what was it like putting this film together? Well, in the days when I was allowed to roam free, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was pretty fun. I mean, this movie was definitely like most independent movies, a labor of love um, and a lot of hard work, but also kind of a joy to put together because we were, you know, um, kind of let loose in the playground a lot, uh, not too many corporate overlords uh, overseeing us. So it was definitely really fun. And it was, you know, I think just the experience of shooting in Chinatown was pretty amazing. I mean, I've lived in New York for a long time and I've always loved Chinatown, but there's something sort of mysterious about it, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because even though I speak a little Chinese, even though I've gone to the restaurants, I didn't know the people there. It always seemed kind of like larger than life to me. And when we were actually filming the movie, I got to know people. Um, like I would see people that I knew like walking down the block and like say hi and you kind of get to know a little bit more of the nooks and crannies. Um, so it was pretty fun. I have a lot of fond memories of it. Um, and I'm pretty worried about Chinatown now, mm -hmm. you know, which has been hit hard uh, yeah. by COVID. But, you know, it was it was a great time. Still plenty of mystery left, though, in Chinatown. <laughs> so you learned a lot about the people. What were some things that you learned about that you didn't anticipate? Because like you said, it's like a really mysterious place, even for somebody like you that knew about it. What are some little cool intricacies that you picked up about Chinatown along the way? Okay, well, one of the things is, so the, the movie is kind of a noir, like Coen Brothers type noir heist movie, kind of. It's, mm -hmm. little, it's a little zany. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of imagination sort of right. when we were writing. So I kept imagining that there were like secret kind of lairs and alleyways in Chinatown. And it turns out there really are. Mm -hmm. So when... I kind of, you know, we were shooting and I got to actually see some of the, the back alleys and a lot of those buildings are actually connected wow. by hallways, like underground and stuff or like in ways that you wouldn't expect. It's, it's really kind of crazy. Um, and there's like some old families, you know, who've been there a long time, you know, who invested in real estate very wisely, like many years ago. And so there will be like secret apartment behind like a restaurant like wow. that's a really nice apartment that they just kind of keep um, a lot of the older generation or not maybe not a lot but some of the older generation now live in Queens or something but mm -hmm. their restaurant is still there so they basically will keep it like a crash pad like behind behind the restaurant or something like that so you know you just kind of get to see things like that which is pretty fun that's really cool because like people have known about like the whole handbag thing and like the knockoff products thing but like you have this person who you wouldn't expect in those situations and this older grandmother and you're putting her in all these situations so what was it like playing with the concept of like yeah we've seen these noir type movies these heist type movies but it's with this protagonist that you haven't seen before what was the coolest part of playing with that concept I mean, I think that was sort of, you know, the whole gist of the movie in a way. It's sort of like a fish out of water story in a way. But it's, it's really about uh, being underestimated, I think. Especially like senior citizens, little old ladies. You yep. think they're harmless, but they can really be pretty badass, I think. Um, I don't know if, if uh, the women in my life are any, are any example. Um, yeah, so it was just sort of like playing with that and sort of grandma using her age to her advantage in mm -hmm. a way, yeah. knowing that she's being underestimated. Um, so it was just really fun. I mean, this movie was just really fun to work on. Um, made me want to write more comedies <laughs> instead of serious movies. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to flex that muscle for a little while, right? As opposed, like the serious stuff you do is great, but like to play in that world must have been so much fun for you. It was fun, especially because, you know, making a film is a very long endeavor. Uh, and so it's really nice to be able to like have some laughs and not take anything too seriously. And you also play with this concept too. It's like, you know, the kids are like, hey, grandma, come move in with me. Like, we'll take care of you. And she's like, no, I got plenty of life to live. Like, I'm going to go to the casino. I'm going to do my thing. Like, it's a great lesson for people, no matter how old you are, like, there's still plenty to do in your life. 
Oh yeah, totally. I mean, some of that is like maybe me projecting my own fears about getting <laughs> old because you know, it's kind of this irrational thing. The older you get, the more like a child people treat you, mm -hmm. like you need to be taken care of. I mean, in some cases that is true, but you know, a lot of, a lot of older people, I think really want to take advantage of their golden years. They don't want to be dependent on someone and, you know, still got lots of kick left in them. <laughs> No question. So you mentioned the fact that Chinatown is obviously at the heart of this. Chinatown is really hurting right now, given everything going on with COVID. You know, I know this film is going to be working to raise some funds for people in Chinatown. So what can you specifically tell our audience about, you know, who's hurting there, what's going on and what people can do? Yeah, well, we are partnered with this group called Welcome to Chinatown, which started out as this totally grassroots kind of GoFundMe type of thing that so many of like the neighborhoods, the towns, the communities across America um, have started similar types of things. Just, you know, ordinary everyday people kind of responding to what they saw as like the needs in their own neighborhood. And, you know, with Chinatown, I think they felt it a little harder and a little earlier because some of the xenophobia and New York was hit really hard. Just like people stopped coming and so many of those businesses, their mom and pop small businesses, um, they don't have a lot of leeway in terms of overhead. The profit margins are really small. And so, you know, just, I was just concerned that uh, the neighborhood as I know it might not survive. Um, and so the group that we're working with uh, is raising funds to help support small businesses, get people back on their feet. They're doing um, educational business, like education, loan assistance, translation help. Um, and in some cases, cash grants. But they started out doing uh, doing meals to first responders, buying buying food from Chinese restaurants and basically delivering them to hospitals. Is kind of how they started. But they've been transitioning to other things and working with other community organizations. So they're called Welcome to Chinatown, and they're great. Any of the funds from our uh, iTunes presales are going to support the organization. And, you know, we're just trying to publicize their cause as much as possible. I mean, there's a lot of businesses across America that need help, but yeah. this one's just kind of special to me. Yeah, no question about it. Speaking of the, the virtual release, what do you think about the fact that people are just going to be hanging out at home with the opportunity to see your film? Because like, you've been in the film game for long enough and people going to theaters and seeing all different ways. Yeah. What do you think about people hanging out in their living room watching Lucky Grandma? What's, what are the first things that come to mind? Uh, well, we hope, we hope that they like it because we felt like everybody needed a comedy right now. We need that some was, laughs. This, this provides some good laughs. Yeah, that was one of our main sort of goals. And also, you know, we just didn't know what was going to happen. We still don't know what's going to happen if movie theaters are going to open back up. Uh, I mean, if we had waited, we could, some of those theaters could be closed. We could be competing against Bond. Who knows? True. <laughs> so, Yeah. So we hope that like maybe this is a chance to like have a bigger audience than the film would have normally had to get it in front of more eyes because maybe people are bored and home and looking for something to watch. So that's sort of our big hope. I um, think people will enjoy this one. When people do check it out, what are the big things you want them to be thinking about while they're experiencing this with their families? I don't know. I don't know if I want them to be thinking too much. I just want them to enjoy the ride, uh, you know. Um, and if anything, it's just that everybody's got a story and everybody thinks they're a hero. So next time you pass like a little old lady on the street, just think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't underestimate her either. That's another lesson. Yeah. Don't underestimate her. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Stacey, thanks so much for hanging out. Best luck with everything going forward and we'll talk to you down the road, right? Okay. Thank you so much.